Good morning everybody and welcome to the Yarn Fuse Daily News Show for Tuesday the 7th of February 2023. My name's Carl McDuff and I'll give you all the, the Rangers headlines to set you up for your day this morning. Um, some really sad news to kick us off. Um, you would have seen that former Rangers goalkeeper Billy Thompson passed away at the age of 64. I'll read out the Rangers statement. All at Rangers Football Club were saddened to learn that former player and goalkeeping coach Billy Thompson has passed away at the age of 64. Billy Thompson, who enjoyed a fantastic playing career with his St Mirren, Motherwell and Dundee United, with whom he featured in the 1987 UEFA Cup final. He was in the Rangers squad in the seasons 94-95 and 95-96, where he made seven appearances. He returned to Rangers as goalkeeping coach in the early 2000s and worked with Stefan Cross and current goalkeeper Alan McGregor. The thoughts of everyone at Rangers are with Billy's family and friends at this difficult time. And I absolutely echo that last uh, sentiment from everybody at the Gallant Few. Thoughts um, are with Billy's family and, and his loved ones. It's... Uh, uh, 64 really is no age at all. Um, not a player with too many Rangers appearances, but if you look at overall impact, he is credited to to having such a big influence on Cross and probably more notably Alan McGregor, who would have been just breaking through and learning his trade at that time. So really sad news. And um, yeah, um, well, it's nice of the Rangers to um, remember them um, like that. Hopefully there will be um, a minute of silence at uh, these clubs um, when we next play. Um, I think he actually did play uh, maybe one or two games for Party Thistle as well. So I'd imagine there would be a, a minute of silence um, this Sunday uh, when, when Party come to Ibrox for the cup tie. Um, moving on from on the, the other headlines... Um, Yesterday, there, there was a few headlines around Alfredo Morelos apparently being interested, uh, being sought after by Konya Spore from Turkey. Um, I'll be honest, I've never heard of him. Um, I'm not big on Turkish football, but um, it's just really the, the, the bigger teams, Galatasaray, Fenerbahce, um, that have versus Spore. I didn't really know Konya Spore were a team, uh, but apparently they are sniffing about. Um, it works a wee bit different in Turkey, where their transfer window closes a bit later, so it's actually open until tomorrow. I believe it closes tomorrow night. And basically, Konya Sport have... They're, they're trying to get a couple of attackers in. Um, they need new options. They did try and get Istro. Um, and... They, they, that fell through apparently because of family reasons but I don't know if this crew has uh, moved elsewhere um, it's Serbian boss Alexander Stanjevic um, I don't know if you remember him I, I'm sure he, he played for Serbia a couple of times but he's the manager and reports are saying that Alfredo Morelos would be further down his, his list now um, now that they can get his crew I don't really know how much tooth there will be in this. Uh, even if there is any tooth, can I see Morelos want to go to Turkey? Um, I don't know. Obviously, there's going to be a massive payday for him there. But I don't think you need to look too far. Uh, I mean, you can even speak to Alan McGregor, ask how he got on to to find out that it's not always as it seems when you go to um, these countries for the tax-free salaries. I, I don't know. I, I think Morelos... He fancies himself at a, a bigger level to play at a level above Rangers. Whether that's uh, true or not is a different matter, but I do think he has that belief. And I don't think Conyers War has that step up. I'd be really surprised to see him go there. Um, but stranger things have happened. We'll wait and see. Just um, another 24 orders to go, and then we'll know for sure. Other news coming out from Rangers yesterday, um, some massive news actually um, for the commercial side of the club that the new Edmondson House um, events have now been announced um, and there's I think maybe four key events. So following the success of the the opening of a new Edmondson House, uh, Rangers are delighted to announce a range of exciting non-match day events. 
But please take and form that supporters who purchase the new Edmonston House supporters package will get exclusive access to the ticketing website. The access is via a pre-sale window 48 hours before all these events are on general sale. So I'll just run through what the events are, when, how much the tickets are and when they go on sale. So the first one is actually uh, for two weeks on Sunday, Sunday the 19th of February. It's a new Edmondson House opening gala. Um, so guests can enjoy a champagne reception, three-course meal, wine, commemorative gift and it will also include representation for Rangers first team and Rangers women team. Um, the tickets are priced at £120 and a lounge suit dress road will be in place. So the pre-sale for this event is actually today at 10am and a maximum of two tickets can be purchased. Subject to availability, the general sale will then go on, at te- on sale at 10am on Thursday, the 9th of February. So for that one, if you're interested, £120, two weeks on Sunday. Um, tickets go on sale at 10am today if you're part of the pre-sale or 10am on Thursday. The next one um, is quite an interesting one. On the same weekend that Rangers Legends, Legends take on the World Legends, um, Rangers are going to have a, a Night of Legends, which will take place on Saturday, 25th of March, 2023. Obviously, with the game being on the 26th, the day after. Uh, so, the guests include Clive Tilsley conducting a Q&A session with certain players from both squads, Ronald De Boer, Arthur Newman, Barry Ferguson, Jack Wilshire and Yap Stam, already confirmed. Um, and there will be live music throughout afterwards. So tickets for this are £35, and the same again. The pre-sale goes on sale at 10am this morning, and general sale at 10am on Thursday the 9th of February. There's also two gigs announced. Um, St Phoenix will play Friday the 31st of March, and Callum Beatty will play Friday the 7th of April. Um, The... The pre-sale for both of them are this Monday, the 13th of February, and the general sale are a week tomorrow, 15th of February um, at 10am. Okay, so um, they've not quite released the ticket prices yet, but that'll be two good gigs to kick it off. Obviously, St. Phoenix and Gallon Beatty, very, very notable Rangers fans, so good that um, we've got... Got a couple of bells opening the first couple of gigs. That'll be a good night if that's your if that's your thing. Get along. Um, and other Rangers news. Um, I seen this um this headline. It was quite interesting. Jermaine Defoe's been speaking to certain papers and certain news outlets about um his his path to being a manager and his take on the on the current challenges and other high profile English players going into management. Um, and just really about the difficulties and how cutthroat it is, but he did um, give a wee, um, a wee snippet of how much he got involved at Rangers. So he said, if a manager gets sacked, sometimes you have a guilty conscience. Like, it's not his fault. You see him putting the work in during the week. There's a game plan and the players are the ones who've got to go and execute it. If you don't and then the manager gets sacked, I realise that's a part of it. There was one occasion at the Rangers... I think it was against Real Madrid pre-season. I wasn't involved, so Stevie told me to, told me to pick the team. I don't know who to put on the bench because of the quality in the squad. Stevie said to me, this is what I have to deal with every weekend. If you're leaving players out, it's a difficult conversation. But that's the stuff you have to do. I wouldn't say I'm looking forward to that stuff, but it's part and parcel. So, fair play to Jermaine Defoe because... For team selections, he's, if he's only done it once, he's got a 100% record and it's against Real Madrid. And we won 2-1 that, that day, albeit it was a friendly. But um, good to see he's, he's still going down the pathway of the managerial route. I, I think we all agree that he's, a, um, he's got so much experience in the game and he comes across so well. So He, atti- he articulates his thoughts in the game. Very well. Um, he seems a very clever football in person. Um, I'd love to go and I love to see him going into management. I think he would do really well. But I like how he's taking his time with. Um, and you know he's he's doing coaching at different clubs. Um, trying to get involved at Rangers, and obviously, he's got a very, very close relationship with Stephen Gerrard. So um, that translated into him picking the team. Uh, one game. So all the best age. I mean, default and in your. 
uh, and your future endeavours. Um, the last wee bit of news for me today, just uh, reiterating that the Rangers B team are back in Lowland League, at, Lowland League action tonight. Um, they're hosting visitors Gretna 2008 to the Barton Stadium and this is a 7.45 kickoff at the Barton Stadium. Um, obviously Rangers B still uh, tied third in the league with uh, Celtic B. Gretna 2008 16th. So you'd like to find that this isn't going to be a, a huge task for them. Um, it should be a comfortable win. Um, tickets are available to purchase on the Rangers website. They're priced at £7 for adults and £3 for concessions and juveniles. If you're looking for your, your midweek fix of Rangers, the Young Bears can sort that out for you tonight. So that's all for me for today's update. Um, just a kind of recap on what's uh, been going on in the pod. Also, I'll be with you, or myself, maybe Steve, will be with you every day this week, giving the morning news update. Uh, last night, our uh, Premier League Premier League podcast um, with myself, Mason, Jamie and Graham ran through all the events of the English Premier League. I cut uh, new appointments, sackings, dodgy red cards, um, plenty to chat through. So that's available wherever you get your podcasts. And again, just a call to arms. If everybody can put in their top 10 players of the journey. Got some fantastic responses on Follow Follow and YouTube yesterday. Um, just wherever you get your podcasts or on the, on the social media sites. Um, we'll put up some posts. If you can comment who your top 10 players of the journey are, we'll do a, a big tally of who's I, who, who comes out of the top 10 and maybe get two or three podcasts out of it. Um, also, we were lucky enough to interview Morris Ross last night, uh, so watch out for that coming probably the start of next month. Um, he came on to do the 10 questions, so very, uh, very down earth guy, very good when we come on, so that'll be coming with you in the coming weeks. But until then, folks, um, have a cracking Tuesday, and we'll speak to you tomorrow. Take care.